Okay, I used to come here a lot in the early days, but it's now 10 years since I was last here, and it's quite amazing how things have developed. It's, uh, this used to be the whole, the whole bear sanctuary, but now it's just the first rehabilitation room. It's amazing to see it. So the quarantine is separated way away from all the other bears. Obviously, we need to keep disease away um, from our healthy bears. And the quarantine is usually about four months. Um, on my right is our waste disposal system, or part of it. This is the final result. It's as you can see, a lily pond. And, um, and the waste is, is um, processed in a plant just across here. And then it finally ends up here. Uh, where the process obviously continues through osmosis or something like that. Anyway, um, in Vietnam, we've actually got to the point where the water is drinkable, the cleaning water is drinkable. That's Tao Jai John, that's like the rescue market dog. Okay, come on everybody. John, I'll show you Tao Jai later. <laughs> we can, we'll introduce you to him. On my left is a special, one of our special care areas for bears that need that little bit of extra attention. So we've got a bear with eye problems, we've got a bear with mobility problems in there, and we've got a bear that just plain doesn't get on with any other bear. Which, you know, considering they're solitary animals in the wild, um, it's, it's pretty remarkable that they, they are together at all in enclosures. Um, but don't worry about lingering here too much, guys, because you're going to see loads and loads of bears, including special care bears as well. Um, on my left is the hospital. Um, that was put up a couple of years ago. And we've been extremely lucky to get some, you know, some donated equipment to allow our vet staff to obviously give the, the bears the care that they need. The bears just need anything from, a, from surgery to remove the gallbladders lasting, I think the record is about two and a half hours, and the, the highest record is 12 hours. The, the, the tissue is so um, scarred and, uh, and inflamed and thickened, blah, blah, blah. It's just it's a hideous mess in there. So that's the wastewater treatment on, on my right. This is our herb garden. We're growing the herbal alternatives to bear vine as well so that children can acknowledge. We've, we've been um, obviously assisted by Chinese medicine doctors along the way. Hmm. With their name, their description, um, some little bits of information about them, how they died and some nice pieces of memories from um, from some of our staff as well. Sorry, there's lots to see, guys. Please don't feel I'm rushing you. I know I'm a bit, but this is not kind of the main bits. But on my, there is a, a macaque in there called John. <laughs> Actually, it is named after John Wedderburns <laughs> from many years ago, if you remember John. He may, we give him the choice whether he wants to see us or not. So this is why we put the foliage. He might pop his head out at some point, and then again, he hasn't. So uh, just, just don't, don't shout, just be quiet. This is Benji. He's a Tibetan brown. <laughs> and he's very curious, he likes people. He'll start smelling you. Okay, everybody, can we move ahead, please? So, you know, I'm not trying, going to try to pretend fights don't happen because they do. But again, the management protocols here are extremely rigid and the enrichment sessions that these bears get over a 10 day period, they are enriched um, in different ways, um, 20 times, 20 different rotations. So mm. every time they burst out of their dens, they can expect nothing to be the same as the previous day. Absolutely nothing. The food is hidden in different areas. There are different sensory sprays mm. such as lavender or lemon or even chocolate sauce or marmite. Um, which is smeared everywhere. It, it doesn't even matter if they don't like lemon, which they don't, because that's what they would find in the wild. And that as well just stimulates these intelligent minds to make mm. them go, oh, don't like that very much, and they move on. Um, so the food is hidden in different areas to prevent dominant behavior, and also to um, encourage natural foraging instincts that they would have in the wild as well. We're probably going to introduce uh, more of those in the enclosure. There's something very interesting happening here, guys. Um, we, we do have a bit of a spat 
but we have a couple of bears around that are quite worried about this fact. <laughs> and we do have peacemakers in the enclosure. Yep. We absolutely Fantastic. do. In every enclosure, there is usually a peacemaker that will try to prevent fighting. It's wow. absolutely unbelievable. They will get in the middle. There's a very famous bear That's in incredible. this enclosure called Jasper. And I, I, that, the one in the crush cage that I showed you, 15 years in a crush cage, I, I love this bear to death because he will amble over and say, come on guys, break it up, and in bear language, whatever yeah. it is. And it's, it's just superb. It's superb. So, so it is feeding time now, so of course, you know, there, there's going to be the odd stack. We've had two deaths from what we call play gone wrong, and that's involved juveniles both times. Both times, um, one juvenile um, bit another one in the femoral artery, and the bear bled out very quickly. Everyone was absolutely devastated. But you know, it's, stuff happens in the wild. It will it will happen as we well. A lot of bears with um, severe eye problems, again as a result of being on the farm, the poor nutrition, a lack of vitamin E, bad cataracts, oh god, lens luxation. We're very very lucky. We have. Um, ophthalmologists from the UK that come out for free. Um, they've been out three times now and in some cases they've actually been, a been able to give vision back to our blind bears. So they're, obviously they can't with him, they had to remove both his eyes, but um, wherever they can they will. But you can see again, having no eyes for the bears is no impediment. You know, it's, it's probably slightly bothersome, but they find their food, they have an ex exceptionally keen sense of smell, of uh -huh. course. But you can see a lot of it. This is, this is not our building, this is the original government offices here. So, you know, one day we'd like to do something here, but we don't actually have the funds to do it. But, you know, hey, it's fine. It's all out of bounds, so please don't go in these buildings. Since the earthquake hit, we've had five areas that are out of bounds. So we've got some dangerous buildings on site. The graves are built within the east-west concept. So you've got the Chinese pyramid-shaped graves, and then you've got the Western Cross. It does not denote Christianity, which we've been accused of in the past. It's just a mark of respect, a Western mark of respect, with a Chinese mark of respect, to say goodbye to bears that we've loved. Um, we bury the bears with um, their favourite food, with their favourite toys. Um, we say a poem in English and Chinese. Um, that there's a part of the poem that says, please look upon the others and give them promise of hope soon and tell them to be patient and always wear the moon. And it just always makes everyone burst into floods of tears when that happens. Um, the bears are either cremated um, or if they have mobility problems, they're buried. And we figure they won't mind in a few years to be dug up again so that we can analyse their skeleton. Remember, our goal is to end bear farming and we need to prove every single thing against this hideous industry, even to the fact that cage confinement causes so much um, you know, physical uh, problems to these bears. Torture traps. Yeah. Um, again, the, the method is you've got the feeding tray there. So the bear is um, perpetually hungry, they've, so they've always got a full gallbladder of bile. Um, and so the bear then is encouraged to drink honeyed water, so obviously flips over onto his abdomen. And then as soon as he does that, the operatives get underneath and you can see the, the gap in the middle is wider than the rest of the cage and the guy can just get up there and take the bile while the starving bear is preoccupied trying to drink. And a lot of them, again, you'll see crushes that, let, again, just crush them flat or move them that way, manipulate them whichever way they like, pretty much like machines, which is what they become at the end. Biosecurity for disease is not brilliant. It's okay, we've got away with it. We have a lot of protocols again, but you know, ideally separate the small animals from the bears every time. Okay. This is everything you see, all, this is obviously still all horticulture, we're still growing, um, we grow corn at this time of year. Don't touch Toto, we've got a lot of rescued dogs that have come from traumatic backgrounds. He, Toto will bite, so please don't touch him. We've had him 10 years, so an old timer. This is one of the most amazing places. You've done a fabulous job to rescue the bears from the torture and terror of Chinese bear farms.